an apparent plateau of cases. Fewer patients hospitalized with COVID-19, all what should be good signs for the pandemic in Arizona. But the system set up to help get people tested, provide financial relief, and make sure our kids can return safely to schools are still plagued with problems. Tonight, ABC 15 going in depth into the state's struggles to get COVID-19 under control. Adam Waltz kicks off our team coverage. It's January 2020 and life is easy. Amazon at your fingertips while you're at the bars with friends or at the gym in the morning. But in just two months, that would dramatically change. Keeping Arizonans as safe and insulated as possible from this disease. USA! USA! Since January 26th, Arizona's first case. Over the last few weeks, we've seen these numbers continue to climb, and we expect greater increases as we move forward. 163,000 cases and 3,300 deaths have followed due to COVID-19. Governor Doug Ducey has signed more than 40 executive orders, and yet Arizona's still facing major hurdles. Let's start with unemployment. It's panic mode. It's panic mode. People woke up this morning with no money. But I have yet to hear about my money. Two weeks ago, money vanishing without warning from 28,000 accounts deemed as fraud, like Kimberly's. She lost almost $5,000. I have yet to hear from DES. I call every day and ask them, um, am I going to get a check? Are you going to deposit it? Are you going to give me a new card? No one can answer me. The Arizona Department of Economic Security saying about 1,000 probably should not have been closed. Now those people forced to send pictures of themselves with an ID to get their money back, which many haven't. I couldn't figure out why we got it. I asked my husband, I said, did you apply for anything? He says... No. Last week, ABC 15 reporting DES still sending debit cards to people who never applied for unemployment. ABC 15 heard from 300 people who received almost $2 million total in unsolicited unemployment benefits. Parents at home figuring out how to pay their next bill. They're also trying to navigate the plan for schools to reopen. With some districts restarting online instruction this week, still no statewide plan to safely return to classrooms. Now thousands of educators, students, and parents frantically trying to figure out what to do, hoping for guidance from our governor. Arizona will be open for learning, and our priorities are going to be public health and safety. We're going to make data-driven decisions. Schools will be required to provide help for remote learning by August 17th, but when asked about the goal to physically return to classrooms, it seems we're just going to let districts create their own protocols under state benchmarks yet to be determined, and that won't be mandated. The Department of Education will be working with the Department of Health Services and our county health offices to develop this framework by August 7th. Valley and rural districts still working to fill any gaps in the digital divide where adequate internet is still an issue for so many people in 2020. We knew that there were problems with connectivity outside of the school itself um, for quite a while. COVID-19 testing is an Everest of its own decline. Currently, tens of thousands of tests backlogged at Sonora Quest, and a lag in testing in general is outlasting COVID symptoms themselves. For the last four months, we haven't seen uh, an abundance of testing. People have had to stand in line for 13 hours in their cars in 115 degree weather. So people are becoming very skeptical. Not to mention it took four months for the governor to give cities authority to mandate masks. States have been given pretty clear guidelines by the CDC and the president's own commission as to how to reopen and states chose to ignore those guidelines. Professor Brooks Simpson, an American and political history professor at ASU, said states like Arizona have ignored these guidelines in a rush to return to normality. And our own governor was quick to lock down the state after protests, then to avoid the spread of COVID-19. We, for example, had no problem with the state shutting the state down for a week with a curfew um, in, in reaction to unrest. Um, I, I, but we haven't seen that same sort of aggressive action to protect the public in another way um, when it has come to this uh, pandemic. Adam Waltz, ABC 15, Arizona.